Hey guys, how's it going? I'm just going to make a quick video today on basic time series analysis. So the question pops up all the time, oh, the market went up today, is it going to go down today, or is it going to go up two days in a row? Simple things like that. So we're going to go over what's called autocorrelation, and I'm not going to get into the math or anything like that. I'm just going to program it real quick, and hopefully you guys will get some value out of it, and then you'll spark some ideas. Please don't trade on this. It's not sophisticated enough, but it's a cool stepping stone. So anyways, you'll see that I'm coming up here to my terminal. Uh, I got to go to my folder. Um, that's just where I keep this uh, listed. Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to just run a Jupyter Notebook. You don't have to run Jupyter Notebook in a terminal. Anyways, I'm just going to click Enter. And I'm going to get it to open up. And then this is what Jupyter looks like. You can see I got other projects in here. I'm just going to come to New. Python 3 and let's write some stuff so first one I'll oh, look at that John's text uh, I'm just gonna write time series analysis I did escape M to make it a markdown cell you can see that it's a markdown anyways it doesn't matter analysis and I'm gonna write autocorrelation under it and I'm gonna press option enter is a uh, on my Mac and it gives me a new one and it submits the code. Anyways, the Python part of it is I'm going to import a couple of things like import numpy as np, and import pandas as pd, what else do I have to import? I got a little cheat sheet that I wrote before I started. Uh, what do I got? Pandas data reader, that's an important one. I import daytime import pandas data re reader dot data import data reader so these are all my packages and then I'm just going to create a new one valid syntax uh, what is it I'm happy with uh, from this should be from oh it's, there we go there we go. So all my packages are up and in, and then I'm going to start just defining an action. Let's do um, def read data. I probably should have made this easier. I'm going to put in a ticker that I care about, a data source. We're going to do Yahoo Finance for the API. Um, I got a start date, and I got an end date, like when, when we want to look at the dates. And then I'm just going to say that my data frame, I just named it df, be any verbal, be x if you want, I don't care. So I'm going to call the data reader, right? That's coming up here from the data reader object. So like I've already imported that package, which is nice. And so I'm going to say, okay, whatever the ticker is, I'm going to put in the data source. This is going to look a lot like the word straight from above, and it's supposed to. And these are all my definitions and then since it's a function I'm just going to return the data frame so let's call something and then I'm going to define the ticker and everything so I'm going to call ticker is equal to you need quotes it's going to be G G S P C and then I'm going to do what else I got uh, start date um, let's just do 2017. Let's do from 2017-01-01. And then let's do end date. Let's just do it today. And so you have to use date time dot date time dot today dot strip time strip time s t r f i strip time. If you just want to copy and paste this, that's fine. I mean, don't feel bad. This is just me. I had to mess around with it earlier to make sure that I could get the code to work the way I wanted and that it would feed in correctly. So that's my end date, which just means today. So end date is just saying today. So if you do it on a different day, obviously it's going to be whatever your end date is. This today module or um, method calls whatever the date is today, and this just puts it in the correct format. Um, we got ticker, start date, end date, uh, data source, so that's all. I always think it's Yahoo API, I mess that up every time. So now that that's all defined, I'm just going to define as SPX, right, because that's the data that I'm importing. I'm just going to say read data, which is this function. So basically all of this is going to populate this, and then it's going to spit it out back to me. 
Okay, which is nice. And I'm going to do ticker, and I'm going to do data source, and I'm going to do start date, and I'll do end date, and that should give me it. And then I'm going to print out the tail, spx.tail. Tail just prints out the last five observations. Uh, ticker, what did I, I spelled ticker wrong. Let's see, it's populate. Boom, there we go. Okay, so here's our SPX data. It came from Yahoo Finance. It's nice, right? It's pretty. That's why Jupyter Notebook's so great. And now let's do some um, auto correlation. So I'm just going to do it on what's the, the adjusted close column right here. This guy. I mean, I know that it highlighted everything, but just the adjusted close. Um, so I'm just going to strip it out and I'm going to name something like. Um, returns. I'm going to name like the returns. So def, I'm going to do autocore daily. So we're going to see if tomorrow, for example, the SPX normally re reverts. I'm going to feed it a data frame, which is the data frame we just created, this SPX. And then I'm still over here. I'm going to do returns so we're going to do the returns of the autocorrelation it's going to be df.pct change so that's the percent change right so like if i'm looking at the adjusted close it's going to be the percent change difference between all these guys and i forgot uh, let's do this and then i do autocorrelation that's my definition of it. It's going to be the returns, right? So this guy up here and just the adjusted close, like I mentioned, that's grabbing that column dot auto core. And then I'm going to say return auto correlation, correlation. I think that's right. And let's do it. Let's do. Uh, Auto core daily, just calling a function. Man, this video should not have gotten this long. I tried speeding through it. And let's see. Okay, so I have negative point zero five five nine. Okay, so for the analysis on that, that means a positive autocorrelation means that its chances are that it's gonna be trending. So like if the market went up today, it's likely to go up tomorrow, it's likely to go up the next day. And then quite the opposite, it means it's mean reverting if it's negative, meaning like if it went up one day, it's likely to go down the next day, it's likely to go up the next day, which is like kind of intuitive, right? And so um, to kind of branch and build off of this, you could, like obviously this autocorrelation is rather small. Um, you have to check for significance and things of that nature, like is this even significant? Um, and I'll post my GitHub repository that I was cheating off of over here so that you could check it out. It came from a data camps introduction to time series analysis. Anyways, you could see that um, this isn't that big of a correlation, meaning like most, like, like a little bit more than never, uh, it, it reverts, right? But there's not like a lot of significance. So you could look in and say, oh, you know, every three days it mean reverts or it trends for a couple of days. So this is a lot of the base stuff for like, a lot of hedge funds do this kind of stuff, like basic time series analysis and there's tons of books and everything. So um, if you guys just want to copy this code, follow along, great, do it. I mean, I took a lot of the code from different tutorials and mindsets, and I just thought this was the easiest way to explain in like 10 minutes uh, what autocorrelation is and how to actually get it out. So once again, I'll post my GitHub below, and you can check out things like I bring in, uh, let me bring it over here. I bring in, uh, I won't let me. Anyways, it lets me, I, I talk about things like stationarity, um, significance, uh, random walks, things like that. Um, it's all cool stuff. Anyways, guys, hope you have a great day, and I hope it was somewhat informative. Have a good one. Bye.